be strict with me, but don't make me cry. <laughs> be strict with me about what I need, what my worst habits are. Oh, okay, fair. You've actually thought about this. I'm quite impressed. Yeah, I have. I'm excited. It's only taken five years. Yeah. It's only taken five years and a whole year since I last, I've explained this already, but since I last had a proper flat work list. Surprise, surprise, time is running away with me as per usual. Wanna shake the ground, wanna break away, let loose. I'm tired of waiting, gonna make that move. All the neon signs, now they shout to me. Hi guys and welcome to another vlogging vlog vlog. A midweek spontaneous one. I'm not sure what day this is going to upload but I know it's definitely not going to be a Tuesday. Today is currently Thursday the 20th of August and as you can see I'm not at work. I have a day off because myself and Emily are going to a dressage la lesson later this afternoon nearly tried to say the word lesson and later in one word then that wouldn't work and I'm actually really looking forward to it I haven't had a proper pure dressage lesson for nearly a year and I'll admit that's probably because I don't really enjoy them I find them excessively hard work and I always used to I'm gonna say this in past tense get quite frustrated and feel that I wasn't good enough whenever trying to make fancy work properly. However, this year I have been massively inspired and I am determined to turn ourselves into the dressage divas that I know we can be. When the girls were down a couple of weeks ago, obviously Megan and Lucy both rode Banks and they made him look absolutely amazing, as does Emily every time she rides him. So I am determined to channel my inner dressage diva and get better at it basically. Stop saying we can't do it, stop saying as Natalie's post on Instagram, I will refer to earlier in the week, we only do prelim or we only do BE90 tests and up our game, push ourselves, set a goal and know that we can train our butts off to achieve it. And as I said, with that mindset, I am now actually really looking forward to the lesson. Again, as I said, I'll shamefully admit that it's been a whole year since I had a thorough dressage lesson. I always felt that I wasn't good enough to do dressage training I would call it like a flat work lesson or we do schooling or we do pole work but I would never feel like I was good enough to do a dressage lesson and train with a pure dressage rider I had two last year which I will admit I did enjoy and it felt really rewarding afterwards and a couple of nights ago I watched the footage back and told myself yes Tina you've delayed it another year but you need to actually get on and do it now because you know you will feel chuffed afterwards put your left leg on yes much better woohoo <laughs> grab the right rein pull the left 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 leg straighten that neck straighten put his head left yes good girl right he's got cans around there on the bit with both reins right now move both reins good move both reins left rein left leg now and wobble the right as you do it that's it pull his head straighten his neck good girl god that's so much better <laughs> Move both reins, move both reins and squeeze. Rounder. Very good. Right, you can have the shiny stuff or mostly pupil for the bump. Now, <laughs> straight in the left rein. Right, good. Nobody's ever going to improve unless they try. And if you just delay trying, then obviously it says it for itself. You will never improve. I'm not sure how well you can hear me because it's horrendous wind here in Cornwall today. Hence there are leaves absolutely everywhere, blown all around the yard, all around the car port. Literally, look, it's forecast to be like 50 mile an hour winds later this evening. Blown everywhere. Robbie's going to be out with his hoover later clearing that up. But what this also leads me on quite fittingly well to say is that when I was watching the footage of our how many times can I say the word dressage lesson in one vlog? 
of our dressage lesson with Georgia last year, it reminded me that it was there that I first ever heard Banksy cough. And he coughed a couple of times in the lesson. And I did wonder, was it just because when he'd been waiting in the trailer whilst Lola had her lesson, whether he'd had some dusty hay, it'll be fine. We'll work through it. Em and Georgia both said to me, work through it. It's only one or two coughs. He'll be fine. But I was like, no, that's not him. He doesn't ever cough in the whole five years that I've had him. He's not coughed once. Like literally, I've never heard him cough. So as I said, that is why Fittingly, I've changed locations and this vlog, what I'm about to show you here, fits in well with our training and our lesson and the fact that in two weeks time we will be kicking off event season again. This time last year was when we had to miss six weeks of the eventing season due to the fact he had this cough. So I am doing everything under the sun that I can to ensure that it doesn't happen again this year. Primary thing being ensuring that he has fed the very best quality haylage. Now, those of you that know Banksy and I and have followed the vlogs for a while will know, oh, now we've got a tractor about to go past. That's gonna make it nice and no noisy. Welcome to the countryside. So yes, those of you that have followed the vlogs for a while will know that I primarily year round feed Banksy hay. Emily's dad's hay to be precise. However, at this time of year, which is the same as when he got his cough last year, it's really hard to get hold of good quality hay because last year's hay is obviously nearly almost gone and nearly a year old. So it's likely to be a little bit dusty. And this year's hay has, has literally just been cut and isn't ready to be fed for what, like the next six weeks or so? So it's that transition period between last year's and this year's hay that I need to find and found something that will ensure that Sir Banksy does not inhale any unnecessary dust particles. At the same time, I also need to ensure he doesn't have anything too rich because he has the most sensitive stomach of a horse I have ever known. And that combined with white legs that go back up and over the hocks <laughs> is not a good combination especially sorry i'm looking at this whilst multitasking here um is not a good combination especially when you primarily want a nice big hay net when you are traveling to a show or somewhere where you need him to look super smart you open a nice fresh bale of haylage it's really really rich banks eats quarter of a hay net is full and it already has the runs and then those nice chalky white powdered legs end up covered in runny slimy stinky poo stains obviously if it's coming out of him that quickly it's upsetting his tummy quite a lot so i first heard about the silvermore light haylage when i saw it on meg's vlog a couple of months back she was doing like a jumping challenge. I think she's just uploaded another video actually, so make sure you check that one out too, which shows all of their range. But I have chosen to go for the light because I mainly need it for the dust-free reason and the fact that I need it to be less calorific. Um, thankfully, they can give you all of the nutrients that are in that so you can actually judge how much they're getting into them. Banks has, because we haven't been eventing, this year and he hasn't been in as much work as he would normally be he has got a bigger belly than i have ever seen on him before so there's a fine line for me between going from the hay to the haylage and making sure he doesn't a put on any additional weight and b get any additionally spicy because some haylages can obviously be known to be heating and spice the sensitive ones up a bit I was fortunate enough to be sent a couple of these bales to try a couple of weeks back now, probably nearly a month ago actually, I will check the dates on that. And I tried the light and I tried the Timothy grass haylage too, but decided I think the light was slightly less, more, less calorific because it says light and it's designed for like native ponies. That's the one Banksy's having because honestly, if I show you his belly, I did a video last weekend and I was like, oh my goodness, I have never seen 
his belly like that. And he is in work at least five days a week. Um, clearly just shows how much eventing burns um, both of our tummies. Anyways, I'm aware I'm blabbing. I've got 39 more bales to move. And I've also got, I will shamefully admit, da -da 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 -da. oh, it's fine. They're working off their bellies. They're galloping around the field behind me. They've just gone through that gateway. I will shamefully admit that I have a 2018 round bale that I still need to move. Because last year I was feeding small bale hay. I was keeping them in the end stable rather than in my hay store. And it's not till now that I'm like, oh, I need somewhere to put these 39 bales. So mission on, get an extra workout and some calorie burning in for me is to clear this and then move all of them from there to here prior to M picking me up for our lesson. Best stop yapping, best start working, and I'll see you all shortly. I just realised that by doing this now, I'm going to be the one with the cough in the lesson. Not Banksy, because it's proper dusty and proper tiring. I now got to help Robbie take a, <coughs> yeah, got some back right? Take a kickboard. Is it a kickboard? Is it a kickboard that's had a proper kick? It is as well. He's using one of my kickboards to put in the summer house, aren't you? Surprise, surprise, time is running away with me as per usual. I've already done Banksa. Hey, Net. Gonna do Lola one, two, so that they're not fighting over the good stuff whilst in the trailer. And then get his lordship in and give him a quick dust off. He had a full on bath on Sunday and spruce up. So I'm hoping he isn't too dirty because I do like to take him to a lesson looking as smart, well, yeah, smart-ish as possible. Super duper quickly, another thing that I'm feeding Banks to act as a prevention rather than cure is the NAF respir resp I can never say this, respirator boost. Um, I fed it to him alongside Ventapulmin last year when he had the cough. So that was actually as, as cure rather than prevention. But this year, because the vet said that it could be a seasonal thing with like stubble fields being cut and corn and all of that, as opposed to, I can't open this one handed, as opposed to just purely feed related or hay related, it could be that the dust is in the air as opposed to something that he's eaten. I'm just taking all precautions and still massively struggling to undo this one handed. But as you can see, this one's empty because he's done 30 days worth of that one already, but they do refill bottles. So this would have been a one litre, that's a five litre. Because this has got the measuring syringe on it, which tells you the quantity that you need to tip into their feed. I'm going to decant that into here and then give it to him daily from this bottle. It's got all natural ingredients in it, specifically blueberry, ginger, licorice, oregano, rosemary, turmeric, rapeseed oil. So it's extremely tasty and smells absolutely divine. Today we are going all out with the ocean from the Woofware range. This is a relatively new colour. Oh, don't drop it in the horn to Tina. Ah, typical me. Em and I were actually meant to be doing a photo shoot of the new Ocean and Shiraz colours when they were launched earlier in the year. However, obviously, because of lockdown, we were unable to do that. Um, we held off for as long as possible, kept them new in the packaging. But yeah, the time has kind of passed now. They've been out for quite a while. So the photo shoot didn't happen, but Woofware have got some awesome new colours in the pipeline. So keep your eyes peeled for them. And hopefully we get to do the photo shoot with them in the not so distant future. There's not actually a lot I, I or we need to say here, but I just have missed doing this so much <laughs> that every opportunity to, to do it now, I just grab it. <laughs> Emily 
got me and Mumster because we're going on a 10 minute road trip. <laughs> and I've got my waifu because I haven't actually eaten anything today. And I don't expect you have either with your um, pain that. that you're in. No, Mummy Dunstan just made me a rock bun and sugar and have a sugary coffee. Oh. Em's got a really bad toothies. Give an antibiotics today. If you don't know, she has been moaning about bad it quite. Bad and bad Emily lot. doesn't really moan that much about a lot, to be fair, do you? No, I don't. Not I'm just a no. really bad wimp when it comes to being poorly. I can't lack it. <laughs> Not like me. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is Don't like you make me. me cry now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but toothache is one of the worst things as well, isn't it? Because you just can't get away from it. And because of COVID-19, you uh, can't have, like, fillings or... Anything done. Anything really done. They are very mm. restricted. So, ironically, I'm the one most looking forward to this dressage lesson. I am excited. Yeah. I hope it goes well now. It'll be good. It's a bit like schooling. It's like, it takes your mind off it. When you just yeah. sat at home, you just... Or trying to get to sleep. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's the worst thing, isn't it? I can see the pain in your eyes. <laughs> anyway, so we'll keep this short and sweet. Yeah, carry on. Let's, I'm, I'm determined not to... It's going to distract my Banksy's mind. Banksy's going to go first, isn't he? Yeah. And... Then it'll be Miss Lola's time. So it's private one-on-one -on -one lessons. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to tell her that I want to work on consistency. Okay. Cool. And be strict with me, but don't make me cry. <laughs> be strict with me about what I need, what my worst habits are. Oh, okay, fair. You've actually thought about this. I'm quite yeah, impressed. I have. I'm excited. It's only taken five years. Yeah. It's only taken five years and a whole year since I last, I've explained this already, but since I last had a proper flat work lesson. How flat long? work dressage. How dressage. Long? A year. Oh, just before going to the champs, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, it, so it all tied in very nicely because that was when I first realised Banksy had a cough. Ah, uh, yes. Remember? Yeah. All yeah. that time ago? I said we have like jumping and flat work lessons with Fred, but for some reason going to an actual pure dressage trainer scares me because I don't feel good enough. It's dashed. so silly. It yeah, is silly. I know it's silly. silly. That's like you know Natalie's that post. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not good enough. It's like Natalie's post. You don't only do 80, or you don't only do prelim. Like you said about entering 90 at Launceston. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Anyway, I have said this already. We're <laughs> going to be at Coleraine any minute. Thankfully, it's a short journey, and hopefully, we both come out like this, and Emily's not like. Ugh. I'll be buzzing. I'm buzzing. I, I said, worst it. case scenario, if it hurts too much, I'll get on Lola. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. I'm glad that my lesson is um, indoors, not outdoors. It's rather windy up here. We're at my favourite location. It is my favourite now. We got a fourth Frillina last time we were here. Yeah, definitely glad we're not up... Um, is it on camera? By that wind turbine today. Oh, you can just about see it in the when I focus. Yeah. Glad we're not up in that top arena.
Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Sweaty mess. <sighs> sponge Banksy off, but didn't sponge myself off. <laughs> She's looking really fit, isn't she? Banksy's the one that's fat this year. <laughs> Just saying how Lola looks very fit and very thoroughbred like. Her neck is looking like a proper sports horse. So we tried to start off by doing our leg gill going down the centre line and moving her across but she was just finding that a little bit more difficult and getting her knickers in a little bit of a twist. So as you see we will turn down the centre line. Georgia then had me 
point her ears, get the correct bend, get my legs in the right position and her ears are facing towards the corner. So you're doing more of a change of rein. Um, she still just finds it ever so slightly difficult. There you see, she just breaks into canter, just resisting me a little bit. Um, and as we get on into the canter, it's more apparent and you'll see that she's she's more locking her jaw but i will talk about that in a minute but here we come down and she's almost clipped and does it an awful lot better Oops, may have just turned right instead of left, but never mind. Mistakes happen. But not quite showing it as early as when we first started trying this, but she just locks her jaw. But actually, it took me almost until the end of the lesson to learn releasing my hands, release Lola's jaw, then allowed us to be able... She then doesn't go rigid in her whole body. Um, so that is definitely a piece of homework that we can go home and we can try oh just having a little spook at the gate but she was bless her very tired by the end of this um a lot of brain power and body power went into this lesson but she went really really lovely i cannot complain as i said i've got homework to go away with um and just got to learn on releasing that rein so when she locks her jaw oh she doesn't really tend to do it there but she is Bless her. Very good. Oh, and then forget about turning. <laughs> I was obviously getting too carried away. But no, super, super pleased with her and looking forward to working on our schooling sessions. very hard. Where is he? <laughs> oh my goodness, have you missed each other? Have you missed each other? Say hi. I take it that means you want to go straight in, Lola. She's like, yeah, I lift the bar up. Well, how can it be a whole 45 minutes later and I still look like a beetroot? <laughs> you don't. Not like me, I was like glowing. I had sweat dripping off my lip within the first 10 minutes. I was like, woo! I had like crammed in my left arm. Worked uh, hard then. Yeah, I worked hard. And I'm smiling. Yay! Yay, they were good ponies, weren't they? The Very ponies good. worked hard. Yeah, they both wanted to stretch at the end. Lots of positives, yeah, they did. I got off just as she went to tap Lola up and she was like, no, get back on, you can work until Emily's here. I was like, ah! No, they were very good, and I will admit, I'm even tempted to say, can we do it again next week? Crikey me. Help. Good. Good. Yay. All positive. She's so lovely though, isn't she? She's so lovely, and she talks to you the whole time, so you know exactly what, even though, even if you can't keep up with what she's telling you, mm -hmm. you know what you should be doing. Yeah. Because it's so many things to do at once, isn't it? That's where it's so hard to film, because you just actually want to film the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because you know that not even so much for you guys to watch, but so that we can watch it back and learn from it again. Mm. Like I was learning from watching your lesson. Yes, now. So, um, as well, I, I had a bit of an advantage because when I came in and then I started doing it down the long side and getting her to flex outwards and it was. 
because you knew that's what she'd been saying to me for ages. Um, I'm not sure if what I'm doing now. Oh, I've still got Haley's bells to move when I get home. So I'll be doing that. And we've got a couple more bits we need to film for a brand video, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. No, it's not. But definitely pleased with that lesson. Oh, amazing. And we've both had an email to say we've been accepted to Launceston. Yeah. Boop, boop. Right, let's get across this road. Bye, bye for now. Despite the loss I'm over here, gotta get across Whether you like it, like it or not There is a moment meant for us When you're taking a sneaky little breather and this happens How am I meant to get back up and carry on shifting bales now, hey? It's proper cut you down, haven't you? Hey? I was only bent over Scrolling through Instagram, I will admit, but all right up there, you little para. Good excuse to have a longer breather, I guess. Sixteen bales down. I've got a long way to go, but thankfully it had a bit of a bit of a drizzle a minute ago. Hence, put my wellies on. The sun's come back out now, hasn't it? Hence your sunbathing on my back. I'm feeling exhausted from the lesson. You're just going to stay there, aren't you? At least I can lean on the fence now. Absolutely exhausted and um, half wishing that I had done more of the bales prior to going to it. But then maybe that means I would have been more exhausted for the lesson and not performed to my um, maximum ability. It was hard work, but good fun and really rewarding to know that we progressed, progressed a lot in such a short space of time. I feel that Georgia explains things so well. I'm not sure how much of the footage you will have been able to hear on the video. So I may well have to do a bit of voiceover. Um, indoor schools and high winds are not a good combination. So you probably won't have been able to hear her tuition that well, unlike when we were out, when we are out and about jumping and Fred is teaching us. I have also, whilst doing this this afternoon, been sent the video of, from Fred, speaking of Fred, our other instructor, of him critiquing and commenting on my last month dressage riders online video. After Sir Mark Todd critiquing my June one, I thought it would be quite nice to get some feedback from my instructor on our July one, especially seeing as we're not entering the August one because Lucy and Meg are doing it on our horses or did it on our horses so we can't submit the same tests because obviously our horses are already entered but with other riders so Fred has sent that through I have quickly just watched it and I'm super excited to share that with you guys too obviously I need to carry on stacking this haylage um, first though so I'm going to end the vlog here. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. As I said, a bit of a spontaneous spend of the day with me one. Not your usual Tuesday, Tuesday night rambles. Husband's looking at me like I'm mad. Am I mad, Robbie? <laughs> like a box of frogs, he said. Have you seen where this cat is? Oh, he's gone. He's still busy doing the summer house. Hope you've enjoyed the vlog, guys. Do give it a big thumbs up if you have. And as always, we do love to read your comments below. Bye, Percy, you leaving me? Thanks for the support, as always. Oh, and if you haven't already seen, we had a super exciting announcement stroke sponsorship reveal, which is going live on Emily's channel tomorrow. This probably won't go up to the day after. So it will have been yesterday. Head over and watch it after this if you haven't already, because it is a partnership that we are very proud of and super excited about the future with. That's enough that I'm going to say without giving it away. Although by the time you've watched this, you've probably already seen it on my Instagram. Yeah, so I don't really need to be secretive, do I? Anyways, over and out. Bye-bye. Take care. Cheerio. Tonight.